welcome to this week's um, message. Um, I'm so pleased you could join me back for part two of my message here this morning. Um, and we're gonna look at that final point that we ran out of time last week to look at, um, to conclude our faith, love and hope um, when we're looking at those visuals of a boat, a community and a rainbow. So um, just to reflect uh, for a moment on last week's message, if you weren't able to join us, we were thinking about the story of Noah and what we could take out of it, what we've learned from it maybe over the last um, few months in the seasons that we are living in. And we looked at a boat that God asked Noah to build a boat and that took faith in God and faith in himself to do that. And through having faith, um, we should walk in faith and not by sight. And we thought about um, that we must learn to live more by faith and not by um, the things that we can see by our natural eye, but lifting our eyes higher to the things that are unseen and putting our faith in God and putting our faith in the things that are eternal. Um, and we looked at how God um, uses the example of a boat through Noah, but also um, goes on through um, the work of Jesus on the earth. Um, and we see boats um, testing the disciples' faith in different circumstances all throughout the um, New Testament. And we looked at some of them testing our faith to step out the boat, testing our faith um, in times of storm and... Um, trusting in God and who he says he is, um, that he is a faithful God, that he is a God of his promises, that he is a God of the impossible. So lifting our eyes to our God and to the things that are eternal, not looking at the natural things that surround us. And then we looked at how out of this um, pandemic, uh, we have seen a real sense of community. And we looked at the story of Noah, that Noah didn't just go in the boat alone, that he built himself his community. And we see that sense of community throughout the Bible. We see that Jesus himself built himself a community of um, disciples around him. And um, that shows that we have to show love to one another, that we're called to show love and respect to one another. And being part of a community shows um, love because we are called to be a part of Christ's community, which is the best community, which is the church. And what it means to be part of the community called the church, to be witnesses for Christ, for Christ to become our reality in what we are doing, to be love in action in everything that we do. So we were looking at that together last week. So we looked at faith, we looked at love, and um, this morning I want us to look together at hope. So now I've uh, reorganised my notes, um, I want us to focus on the rainbow and we see in Genesis chapter 9, so just after the chapter 7 where we read about Noah being called to build a boat and the flood coming and Noah taking people on board the boat, the species, the birds of the air, the animals um, and then um, his family. Um, we then read as the journey goes on into chapter 9 about the coming to the end of the flood. And in uh, chapter 9 verse 16 says, The rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh and is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh. And this is on the earth. So God, by making a promise, a covenant, he was making a promise. The rainbow was God's sign to mankind that he would never flood the whole earth again. The Bible tells us 
that God made a covenant which is a promise to his people. This was the first covenant that God made with his people through Noah. This is significant because there are five Old Testament covenants God makes with his people. This being the first with Noah and the last being what we call the new covenant. And we read in Jeremiah about the new covenant and it promises a coming day when God would make a new covenant, covenant unlike the one which Israel had broken. This coming day would bring forgiveness of sin, internal renewal of the heart and an intimate knowledge of God. Then Luke tells us into the New Testament that on the night of Jesus' last supper, Jesus takes the cup and declares that his death would be the new covenant. The new covenant, the new promise, Jesus Christ, our living hope. Through this journey from the first covenant and the rainbow appearing in the sky to, Je to Jesus declaring his death as the promise secured. We often sing a song in church with the opening words, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I want to challenge you this morning, what is your hope built on? on what are we secure in this morning perhaps we might feel that there's not a lot that we are secure in in these current times that there isn't a lot of security around us when we think about the wise and the foolish builders we see they were both built on two different, they both built on two different foundations. The one that built on the firm foundation is secure. When the rocky time comes, when the storm comes, he is secure. But the man that built, the foolish builder that built on the sand, he wasn't secure in his foundations and it just went away. In the original hymn of the modern version of the song that we sing which is Cornerstone, the song that we mentioned earlier, it says these words based on the words in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4, it says, on Christ the solid rock I will stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let's put our hope in Jesus, our living hope, and build on everything he is and has for us to offer. The psalmist says this beautifully, and we're going to read Psalm 40 together now. says I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry he also brought me up out of the horrid pit out of the miry clay and established and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps he has put a new song in my mouth Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and I will trust the Lord. I'm going to read a bit more because I love this psalm. Blessed is the, that man who makes the Lord his trust, and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak to them, they are more 
than can be numbered. You have brought me out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Our hope is secure in Jesus. Let's not build on fear, the world or people's opinions. Let's not build on Jesus. Let's build on Jesus Christ, the one who lifts our eyes higher, the one who shows us how to love, the one who is the promise secured. Christ is our hope. I felt as I was writing this word, I saw a picture and I'm not one for um, pictures and words, particularly in this way, but I had a real sense that God was trying to speak to some people here this morning. And as I was writing this word, I felt like God gave me a picture of a building. The building is built well and it's on a firm foundation but the owner has gone around and put um, lean-to be beams of wood around the walls propping it up. I don't know if maybe you're good at visualising here this morning but whether you can see that. It's just a simple building um, but it's got, sometimes you have them on fences um, just these beams leaning up against the walls to ensure their security. And this person that has built um, upon this firm foundation has felt that they needed to go around and put these extra beams of wood in place to prop these walls up to give them a extra sense of security. And I felt God say that there were some people listening this morning that have had a faith in Christ for a while or you have built on a firm foundation but you have begun to let doubt or illness or situations dictate how secure you are in your foundation. You have begun to trust in other things or have decided to get some backup plans by putting these extra beams in to add some security. I believe God would say to you this morning, I am more than enough. Nothing needs to be added. I am more than enough. When our hope is secure in Jesus Christ, he is more than enough. He is able to do exceedingly more than we could ever ask, think or imagine. Because our God is able, the God that set that promise to Noah to, to journey it through to all five promises with people to then set that new covenant in place through Jeremiah to then see out the living work of it through Jesus Christ. That is not just circumstance, that is a God that has a story to tell, a God that has a roadmap, a God that has a plan, a God that knows us. He has journeyed beyond where we could even think or imagine. He has gone before us because our God is able and that is the same God that sent his son Jesus Christ from heaven to step down onto earth to be fully man but yet fully God to take on human flesh to live among us to show us how to love and to give us hope Jesus Christ is our living hope. He died a death upon a cross to take away our sins and all the sins of the world. 
he was put in the grave or in a tomb and three days later he conquered death he conquered death death could not hold him the grave could not hold him darkness could not defeat him illness and sickness and disease has no part to play because Jesus Christ rising from the dead, walking out of the grave, leaving darkness behind, becoming the light of the world, means that his name is above every name. His name is above coronavirus. His name is above any worry, any fear that may be um, trying to um, come into who you are right now and take over your mind whatever addiction that you have whatever situation you find yourself in Jesus Christ is above all of that because he has defeated it all Jesus Christ is the light of the world Jesus Christ is our living hope it is him that we put our anchor into it's him who we build our firm foundation in because all the promises that are in this word are living and breathing he is our promise secured He is more than enough. So if we build on that firm foundation of hope and we are set our feet on the solid rock which is Christ himself and we have our eyes set on God and all that he is and can be in our lives and all that he wants us to be through him because he has a hope and a purpose for our lives plans to prosper us Jeremiah says it plans to prosper us to give us a hope to give us a future We don't need any extra security if we have set our feet on the solid rock that we are living by faith. That we are secure in the promises of God through his word. So as I conclude my message this morning, let me remind you of those three messages that I believe we can pull out of that story of Noah, going back from to last week's message to this week's message. The boat is a picture of faith to trust in the voice of God and to not look at the waves or the flood, but to lift our eyes higher. We are part of the most amazing community, the church. Let's be a people that love with no limits. The people would see the reality of Jesus Christ himself through us. Let's be secure in the promises of God. and know that our hope is secure in Jesus Christ, the living hope. As I concluded writing this message a few weeks ago, I was listening to some worship music and this song played just as I was finishing off my final words and I stopped for a moment and I thought those words are summing up the very essence of this message I have and I want to read you those words that were sung over this message if you like as I was typing it on my computer and it's from... Um, it's written by a man called John Joe Barnes and it's called Promises and the words of the um, bridge that particularly were poignant um, were this I put my faith in Jesus my anchor to the ground my hope and firm foundation he'll never 
let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. As we put our faith in Jesus Christ and we lift our eyes higher than the storms that surround us, so we anchor ourselves into that firm foundation. Our hope. God will never let us down. Jesus will never let us down. This morning, I want to pray for a moment for maybe a longer time than we normally do. that we would put our faith in God afresh if we're becoming a bit shaky, if we're letting the storms of life around us dictate what we're doing. That we would rise up as a people of God and be the community that God has called us to be. That we would love with no limits. And that we would be secure in the foundation that we are building on. Hope. Jesus Christ, our living hope. That we would know everything that God wants for us, that God has for us. His, the most amazing promise that God makes is that he will never leave us or forsake us. And he will never leave us because he loves us so much. And he loves you so much this morning. If you're listening to this and you don't know Jesus, let me tell you that Jesus wants to know you. And he loves you and he died upon that cross just as much for me as for you. And you can come to know him this morning. And you can send us an email at prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com so we can connect with you. That we can tell you the love that God has to offer you. Because we love because God first loved us and that is as relevant for you who don't know Jesus yet as, for me, a follower of Jesus. He's pulled us out of that miry clay and he has set our feet upon a rock church and we have a responsibility as a people of God to rise up, to love without limit. To lift our eyes above the waves. To have a faith. And focus on the things of, a, of an eternal nature. And not an earthly nature. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for our time here this morning. Lord, I would ask that you would... Fill us with those values here this morning as we have taken two weeks to look into them of faith, love and hope. And your word tells us that the greatest of these is love. And that is because you are love. You were the greatest love gift given. By laying down your life upon a cross. And Lord we ask that people through this Facebook Live now and this service online, Lord, would experience you where they are right now. Lord, if they don't know you, would you draw them back to yourself? Would you show them how much you love them? That you want to be their friend, that they could become a friend of God. And Lord, to us as believers, Lord, would you... Make us people of faith, Lord. 
I want to be like a Noah, Lord. I don't want to look at the enormity of the task in hand, Lord. I don't want to be like a Peter and take my eyes off of you and focus on the waves ahead and begin to sink, Lord. I want to be where you are. I want to be what you have called me to be. Lord, I want to lift my eyes higher to the greater things that you have for us. Lord, would you lift our eyes higher as a church? Would you lift our eyes higher as a people? Would you lift our eyes higher, Lord, as a collective church, your body, to the things that you are calling us to be, to the people that you are calling us to be, to the things you are calling us to do. Lord, would you drive us to step out in faith, that we would be faith in action, Lord. And finally, Lord, would you fill us with the knowledge of your promises through your word, your living word. The promise that you make to us by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die upon that cross. That we would know hope and hope secured. Your promises secured. Lord, and I pray for those individuals that maybe I was talking about earlier when I saw that picture. Lord, people that maybe feel lethargic in their faith that they've had to, that they've began to question their foundations and they've had to prop up. They feel they've had to add extra security. Lord, that would they know that you are Christ, the solid rock on which they stand and you are more than enough for them this morning. Lord, that they would go now, Lord, that they would have the faith to take down those extra beams of security that they have placed around their building. Lord, Lord, take down those fears that they have, those worries, whatever those beams are standing for, Lord, that you would take them down, that you would fill them with a faith to believe that they are stood on a firm foundation, that you are more than enough for everything that they need, Lord. Whatever those beams stand for in these people's lives, Lord, I ask that you would... Um, Give them the faith to remove them now in the name of Jesus. Lord, if they are strongholds, if they are addictions, Lord, if they are things that have caused them to waver in their faith, Lord, I ask that you would take them down now. Because you are the name above all names. You have conquered every sickness, every disease, Lord. You are, a, you are over every, every feeling, Lord. You ask us to cast our cares upon you. Lord, worry and fear has no place where you are. We put our faith in you. We lift our eyes higher. Lord, we thank you for this time together now. Lord, empower us to be your church, to be your hands and feet on this, this earth in 2020. As we journey through these struggling times, Lord, would you drive us to be a people of a different mindset, of a higher vision, standing on our rock, our firm foundation, secure in the knowledge of the hope that we have in you and the promises that we have in you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Have a great week and uh, we will see you soon. Bye.